you know, I would like to say that uh, Uzbekistan is uh, particularly the flavor of the month, uh, you know, this time in Delhi, uh, this year, because uh, the Suraj Kund Mela is just on, and Uzbekistan is the partner country, and uh, our uh, President of India just inaugurated uh, uh, the Suraj Kund Mela, I think last year was there, and we had lovely pictures, and uh, I personally visited the Uzbekistan uh, pavilion, it's very large. And uh, uh, last Saturday when I was there, there, there was a sea of, there's a multitude of people there, and that's why it was such a hit actually. Uh, you know, so people are actually loving that experience. Uh, we, of course, uh, you know, uh, India and Uzbekistan have a strategic partnership. Uh, Chairman RIS just referred to the civilizational connect, which uh, which goes back to several centuries actually, and uh, you know, e even uh, you know, uh, in pre-Christian era. And uh, you know, with that kind of uh, base, which is uh, so close, which brings the two countries so close to each other, it is natural that today, when we have the capabilities again to direct our uh, energy to our relationship, we can try to connect again through those routes, and on the basis of that, we build a very modern and contemporary relations. Uh, well, there was a colonial period, unfortunately, which had really, you know, uh, brought uh, barriers into, you know, uh, complications within India and Central Asia at that time. But after our independence, we regained that uh, space. And uh, uh, after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, when the Central Asian states became independent, our relationship became even more direct. So while, uh, you know, we have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, in the last 30 years since, uh, since almost all these Central Asian countries gained independence and. Uh, uh, you know, we, we, there is no uh, you know, uh, paucity of very high level visits between uh, you know, uh, Uzbekistan and India and for that matter India and the other Central Asian countries. Our uh, you know, trade volumes have really remained very low, the trade and investment volumes. And that is the matter you know, um, uh, uh, in which you know, uh, the governments uh, from both sides are very you know, keenly looking into that, you know, what is to be done. And uh, you would have heard that uh, you know, uh, uh, we launched uh, the India Central Asia dialogue at the level of the foreign ministers uh, last year, which has become really the new platform on which uh, India and Uzbekistan and all those other Central Asian countries are working together. Uh, there's a very interesting history that uh, uh, Shri Su late Srimati Sushma Swaraj, when she was in Uzbekistan in 2018, uh, Foreign Minister Kamilo and uh, Madam Sushma Swaraj talked to each other, and the idea dawned upon them that you know why not uh, bring all the foreign ministers of the <coughs> So while of course we were talking of India-Uzbekistan relations, the idea was also to uh, you know get a region-wide approach and bring the two countries uh, together, uh, two countries to be initiators of a dialogue. So the joint invitation to all the Central Asian foreign ministers were written by you know uh, the Indian foreign minister and Uzbek foreign minister, and uh, Uzbekistan uh, you know uh, offered to host that dialogue in summertime, which actually took place in January 2019, and we also invited Afghanistan. Uh, to participate in a special session where we would talk of connectivity because a connectivity, uh, you know, the no connectivity between India and Central Asia overland is possible given the politics today without the uh, you know cooperation of Afghanistan and for that matter, given the friendly relations which uh, which uh, you know uh, India has with Afghanistan and Afghanistan has with Uzbekistan and other Central Asian countries, this was possible. The scenario was like this that you know all the seven foreign ministers came together on a platform which was a very historic event in the region, gave a very good signal that for development, for connectivity, all these seven countries wow. stand together. And the India Central Asia dialogue was a big success. And what happened there that, uh, you know, India, the Indian foreign minister offered that India is, uh, you know, of course deeply involved in economic diplomacy and, uh, you know, we are working with other regions, with our other friendly countries, and we are bringing our developmental partnership with these countries. And we had very successful experience of extending, you know, uh, our lines of credit for the business development. And this is what Indian Indian Foreign Minister proposed that you know we want to do that with Uzbekistan also, and and with uh, you know with Central Asia also. And uh, if you remember that President Shavkat Mirzaev had come to Delhi on a state visit in October 2018, and our Prime Minister already announced a US dollar one billion line of credit, a, a mix of line of credit and virus credit for Uzbekistan. And this quantum of line of credit uh, you know, for a single credit country and definitely in the Central Asian region had never been announced before. So you can understand that how strong the political will is from our side to engage with Uzbekistan 
and uh, you know, uh, and it has been reciprocated by Uzbekistan. The, the Uzbek president had very good words of friendship uh, to say about India. He visited Agra. He was gratified. We signed a memorandum of uh, understanding, assistance city relations between Samarkand and uh, and Agra. Uh, all that brought very old connections back. And uh, we decided to work together on uh, in this field. Uh, you know, of course, during this visit. Um, uh, 17 agreements were signed in various spheres, which was a landmark uh, for you know uh, signing so many agreements in single visit. But it showed that you know how much uh, the urge for cooperation was there from uh, both sides. That we work on a lot of documents. And uh, President uh, Mirziyoyev, he decided to come again. Prime Minister invited him, and he said yes, I will come. He came in the vibrant Gujarat summit in January 2019, in which he brought a big Uzbek delegation. There was uh, you know. Uh, with chambers of commerce, you know, there were um, you know discussions and talks on how we can do more with each other in various sectors. And uh, there was a landmark uranium permanent <coughs> agreement uh, uh, contract was signed between India and Uzbekistan. So Uzbekistan actually, you know, while there was a contract which had been which had been signed, but because of certain difficulties that had not been uh, you know actualized, in January 2019, this contract was signed. And in fact, in the field of uh, while uh, Ambassador Mon talked of energy security, uh, well, I mean that's no uh, with uh, the civil nuclear cooperation and supply of uranium, uh, you know, Uzbekistan has the potential to become one of our leading, you know, partners in the field of uh, energy security. So we were we uh, we started to work in these fields, and then you know uh, further developments have taken place. Uh, there is a lot of emphasis on uh, having uh, good business links. Uh, recently, uh, the Chief Minister of Gujarat uh, took a visit, took a uh, you know a, a 50 member plus business delegation to to, uh, to Uzbekistan in, in the month of October. <coughs> that led to signing of almost 50 or even more B2B MOUs, and they did not rest at that. Uh, you know, right after that, on the heels of that visit, Uzbekistan government sent a business delegation to Gujarat, and they signed some further MOUs. I believe that in many projects like uh, IT and uh, you know textile, agriculture, you know uh, a lot of good things are happening and uh, companies are talking to each other and some projects are you know on the verge of uh, you know uh, getting realized. I think there was a big uh, investment which came in the pharmaceuticals. I think uh, more people would speak about it and um, especially in the field of agriculture, um, there has been this constant Uzbek push. And which is good, you know, thanks to the government of Uzbekistan for thinking of that because Uzbekistan has some of the best organic fruits and vegetables. And India is a big, big market for all that. We, we have our own and we import from other countries also. While the quality is so good, that cannot come unless we, uh, you know, we engage on we, uh, having all the clearances of the phytosanitary norms and uh, those kinds of best risk analysis certificates, etc. And so we started to work with, with Uzbekistan. And uh, while, uh, you know, as uh, Chairman RIS was saying that, you know, it is government's uh, their duty probably that if you point out the difficulties government would like to bring in policy changes, and then it is left to business that you can take it forward. So uh, while we exchange technical, uh, you know, uh, data, uh, Uzbek lemons and Uzbek melons have been cleared by government of India for import into India. Similarly, uh, uh, you know, uh, Uzbek companies has given permission for Indian bananas and Indian mangoes to be exported to Uzbekistan. And then there's a you know, Uzbek request for a lot of other kinds of things, chili and pepper and uh, you know, other kinds of uh, fruits and vegetables for which the work is going on. There's a, there's a remarkable opportunity to trade in agriculture and uh, in uh, agricultural production also, I think Uzbekistan has offered when the Gujarat delegation has gone there, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know a, a huge quantity of uh, you know, land which can be made available to Indian investors if you want to go and uh, you know have uh, uh, begin agricultural practices in uh, in Uzbekistan. So we have very good uh, you know prospects in in field of trade and uh, you know in agriculture also. Um, what is happening also that uh, we recently uh, you know if you were paying attention, we recently had the launch of the India Central Asia Business Council. Uh, with the help of Vicky, and this uh, this uh, initiative also came from the you know Indian minister when she spoke at Samarkand. She said that you know at the B2B level, 
we want the chambers of uh, commerce uh, of all the countries to come together and they, they can tell us that you know what policy initiatives are needed from the government where you need uh, you know certain kinds of controls to go or you know what are the you know, obstacles in, in going trade and investment and we would help you and uh, this led to you know finalization of the uh, you know the idea of the india central asia business council where Fiki was a nominated uh, leading chamber of commerce from the indian side and all the five Central Asian countries, you know, they came forward with the names of their nominated chambers. And the heads of these chambers were last week, they were in Delhi. External Affairs Minister spoke to them, uh, you know, which they their work, and they have come out with an outcome document, which is going to now establish the India Central Asia Business Council. And this business council has further identified, uh, you know, certain areas of, uh, you know, the sectors where they will focus and come up with recommendations for the government. In fact, later this year, there is the plan to hold the India Central Asia dialogue, the second edition of that dialogue at the level of foreign ministers. And we expect again that uh, with India and the five Central Asian countries and Afghanistan, all the Central Asian countries would come together. Uh, the good thing was that uh, Foreign Minister Kamilo, uh, who uh, came to Delhi uh, to speak at the Raisina dialogue, he had a bilateral meeting with our external affairs minister. And uh, the both ministers agreed that this dialogue has to be taken forward. Our minister thanked him for you know uh, uh, constantly taking care of the initiatives to go forward in this dialogue. Uh, you know he has invited our minister. You know it's, uh, hopefully this visit will materialize. And uh, you know Foreign Minister Kamilo, when we discussed about regional issues etc., we we got that you know we have similar kinds of approaches with regard to regional issues of you know Afghanistan, uh, challenges of terrorism, uh, drug trafficking. And uh, you know a common desire that you know how we can you know increase our cooperation in various kinds of uh, you know in various fields. Uh, we have uh, you know we have been also paying attention to our defense cooperation, which also holds a lot of uh, you know promise. Uh, in fact, uh, our defense minister Sri Rajnath Singh was uh, in uh, Uzbekistan last November when there was the SCO meeting of defense ministers, but he also paid a visit. <coughs> visit. And in this visit, we we had the first. Uh, you know, uh, India-Uzbekistan military exercise, you know, which took place uh, focused on counter-terrorism. And uh, we can see that, you know, uh, how we have evolved from while uh, the, there was no joint working group on defense, uh, it was established in 2018, the uh, Uzbek defense minister existed at that time. That led to, you know, further cooperation. We had a, uh, you know, uh, uh, exclusive uh, focus of uh, defense delegation, which uh, looked at industrial opportunities in Uzbekistan, of course, we want uh, Uzbek uh, expert delegation to come to India and look at the facilities in defense cooperation, what we can offer to Uzbekistan. And that is also you know, leading to good prospects and hopefully you know, good things will materialize. At this moment, uh, we remain in close touch with our Uzbek partners. And you know, uh, I'm thankful that the ambassador has been very active in you know, uh, channelizing all this energy which is coming from the government to reach out to different uh, parts of uh, government to different ministries. Today, uh, today we have this seminar, I think ICWA is hosting another on, on the coming Friday, I think, of the, with, at the level of think tanks. And uh, you know, uh, what we need to, what we are looking at at this moment from the government point of view, that with the, uh, with the line of credit which has already been announced for the Uzbek government, uh, a few projects have already been identified. And we are at the stage where, you know, in the common, uh, you know, uh, with our common efforts, we will do the detailed project reports of these projects, etc., and then you know, Exim Bank would uh, you know channelize those funds. So what I would like to say that you know those people, especially for the business com business community who are watching these developments, the the signs are you know uh, are are good. Uh, governments are involved, and uh, while these uh, you know trade barriers or trade facilitation trade barriers are being broken, facilitation is happening. So I would request the business community to channelize their energy and seriously look at the prospects of uh, India, Uzbekistan trade and investment. Lastly, there was one, I would like to say that there was one very good idea which came from the India Central Asia Business Council meeting last week that we should look at air corridors between India and the Central Asian countries. Afghanistan uh, has also very good points, uh, so Uzbekistan has very good points to offer. India and Afghanistan already have air corridors working. We don't have one with Central Asia. So if we are managing, if we manage to open an air corridor between India and Central Asia, we would do a lot of trade in perishable goods, especially. 
And you know that is the bottleneck uh, probably which is uh, you know currently in place. But we need an industry view that you know how we can come together on this. So when we talk of Uzbekistan, there are endless opportunities uh, you know for, for now. And I think that you know it is it is very topical that all of us are gathered and uh, discuss the prospects of India Uzbekistan cooperation. I, I think there are very bright prospects. Thank you. Very much. Download Tarang online radio app from Google Play Store. You are listening to Tarang Devotional Online Radio.